Hey guys, welcome to another Q&A session from the Reaper blog. The YouTube channel has passed 10,500 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. It's really cool to see all you guys watching and uh, leaving comments and sharing the videos. Today I'm going to be answering some questions. Here's the first one. First question comes from Clark Wen, trying to figure out how to get my edit cursor to snap to single frame increments. If I'm zoomed in, the cursor moves by one frame, but when I'm zoomed out, it'll be three to four frames. First of all, start with a frame grid uh, and make sure that the frame size set in the project settings is the same as your videos that you're working with. I use a script from Xframe that comes in the repack extension. It's called Xframe underscore move edit cursor to next frame dot Lua. I assign this to the right arrow and there's another one that does the same thing but in the opposite direction. I assign that to the left arrow. So I alt left arrow and find my edit position and then often I will use the select item under mouse action I assign to the letter I and then I press the letter Y to snap the start of that item to where the edit cursor was. There's also an action you can use nudge left by saved nudge dialog settings one and basically you just set up your uh, nudge settings to be one frame left or right then you assign that to an action so that you can nudge an item one frame left or right. Uh, works really well. Next question comes from Heiser Breisart. I was recording myself and I wanted to put out an album. After I made all the recordings of like five tracks, I then realized that I recorded in 24-bit 44.1 instead of 48K my interface was able to do. Should I record everything again or what you notice the difference? The difference is pretty slight between 44.1 and 48K. I do a lot of recording in both formats and above. Most of my music projects are 44.1 just because I'm throwing a lot of plugins at it and I need that little extra uh, CPU headroom that's available when you're using this, the lower sample rates. The main difference you'll hear there is the super high frequencies where you might not even have anything in your mix uh, that is going to make a difference. Sometimes plugins sound better at the higher sample rates, but if they use oversampling, it doesn't really matter because the processing is above, you don't get the aliasing artifacts. Just to summarize this, it really doesn't matter because there's not a huge difference and the differences are mostly in the frequencies that you cannot hear. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. Reaper handles uh, mixed sample rates. So if you wanna continue at 48K, not gonna be a big deal. JDO asks, is there a way to bypass all effects in one click? You'll have to use the keyboard, press Command A or Control A on the PC, and press the power button on any of the tracks. So you're selecting all with the Command A, and then you're clicking on the power button for the effects chain, and that will bypass them. So that's only going to do selected tracks. It's not going to do the master as well. Um, but again, that's just one more click. You can set up a custom action that will select all the tracks and also bypass the effects chains in one click, and you could probably do the master with that as well. You can assign that action to a button on a toolbar and that'll be easy for you to access. Stephen Lewis asks, benefits of having two screens over one? Well, mostly I use one big 27 inch iMac. For music mixing, I love that a lot because it's just a big screen and there's the huge arrange view. Um, for editing, it's great. But recently I've been working on a film and having a second monitor has been essential just to have some metering plugins and to have the video monitor on a separate screen. I have the full main screen for doing the edits. And made a huge difference in the workflow. The days that I had that monitor connected, I probably worked three times faster. Another thought on this is that I don't like the left and right arrangement of uh, monitors. I like uh, top and bottom. I'd have the video monitor and notes from the director on the lower monitor and sometimes I drag my plugins down there to do the tweaking, um, but I'd have the main edit window and Isotope RX and things like that up on the main window. Big improvement if you're working in post-production. Last question is from Rob Brand. Reference tracks, which ones and how to get them? How to use them most conveniently and what quality, CD or MP3 is okay? If I don't have a good idea of the reference tracks that I would need for a particular project, I'll ask the band or the artist to send me something or to uh, recommend something that they've been listening to as they're making their production. Um, you should also build up a library of uh, songs that you like the drum tones on or the, the bass tones and, 
and things that you can pull from as you're getting tones uh, throughout the production process. You can import these files directly into your project and just keep them on their own track, or you could play them through the Media Explorer. Um, you can either have them playing through a de dedicated track or out just the main mix. I like having them in the Media Explorer because uh, I can also use the monitoring effects chain and I can see where they are in the meters. So as far as loudness or frequency balances and things like that. I don't worry about the quality of the reference tracks because uh, frequency balance doesn't change that much. Like the relationship of the vocals and the guitars. So that balance is going to be the same whether you're on uh, CD or MP3. So I wouldn't worry about it that too much. And that's it for this round of Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support on Patreon. Here's a list of people that have supported me in the last month through Patreon. Patreon.com slash TheReaperBlog. And visit ReaperBlog.net for a lot more tutorials. See you guys.